All right, just to help you out with working through some friction problems, I'm gonna run through one right now. And so here we have a surface and we have a box full of probably super important things. And we'll say that that's 12 kilograms worth of super important things. And uh, right away we know a couple things about this box. This box uh, is experiencing a downward force of gravity, which is equal to 12 times 9.8 and it is experiencing a upward uh, force normal which is going to be equal to the force of gravity here because it's a horizontal surface and because presumably the floor is supporting it so if we look this up um, that's about 118 newtons worth of force okay so uh, let's just add that in here just for ease we can see 118 newtons. Okay, so you want to move this box. So here you come along and you are very determined. You're pushing it. All right, there you go. Determined. <laughs> and uh, you're applying, let's say, a uh, 50 newton force. Okay. So ordinarily in a problem we would just pretty much be done we'd look at the force applied in the horizontal direction we'd call that unbalanced divided by the mass you could get the acceleration everything's good in this circumstance though there is an interaction of friction between the bottom of this box and the ground and so we need some additional information and so the information that I'm going to give you is that we have a mu s of uh, 0 0.47 and we have a mu k which is the coefficient of kinetic friction. This one's the coefficient of static friction. The coefficient of kinetic friction, which is always lower than static friction, uh, we'll call that 0.38. The reason why it's always lower is because once an object starts sort of moving, those, those peaks and valleys of the two surfaces are sort of riding along each other on the top rather than like nestling in or, or uh, you know, settling into um, uh, remain motionless. Anyway, so we have our, our mu values here and that means that we can actually find what is the uh, force of friction in the opposite direction. And In this case what's important is um, if we imagine this is a, a stationary box and you've come along and you're about to move it, we don't actually know if it's moving yet. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is solve for the static friction and to do that um, the equation for that is uh, mu s multiplied by the normal force. And so I have those values. I have 0.47 and I know my normal force was 118. And so we can find that the static friction is whatever that number is, 0.47 times 118. Calculator, calculator, we'll call that 55 newtons. Bummer. And so what that means in this case is that you did not push enough to overcome the static friction, and therefore this object remains stationary. What's nice though is that in problems like that, if I was asking you maybe for an acceleration, because that's usually where we go with force problems, if I had asked you for an if I had asked you for acceleration, you would be done. You'd just say, well, Mr. Murphy, the acceleration is, is zero, zero meters per second squared. There we go. Done. Put a box around it everything is good. All right, so let's think instead maybe we didn't have a static friction that was so high or maybe let's say oh, whoops you know what you were pushing with 50 newtons and that just wasn't enough so um, now instead you've decided you're going to push with uh, 70 newtons so you, you, you know kind of limber up a little and you, you push push more and now you're pushing with 70 newtons of force um, so we still have a, a static friction of 55 newtons however our 70 newtons is enough to overcome that and so we go ahead and toss that out uh, we're no longer in a static system we're now dealing with um, a kinetic system okay no problem so we have a kinetic friction which we can calculate by 0.38 multiplied again by the normal force. And in this case, we already know it's going to be less than 55. We just don't know how much less. So 0.38 times 118. And I get uh, about 45 newtons worth of force. 
So now if we go back to our force diagram, we can add in these forces. You are applying this force uh, horizontally to the left of 70, and there is a uh, frictional force here of 45. So we, we know that the um, normal force and gravity are going to cancel. We're looking for what is the unbalanced force. So we have 70 newtons to the left, 45 newtons to the right. 70 minus 45 will give you a net force of 25 newtons. And we can take that and divide it by 12, and we'll get just something over 2 as our acceleration. So uh, if I know that the mass was 12, I could find an acceleration of 2.1 meters per second squared and that would be to the left um, so not terribly different than just a regular force balancing problem however we just have to sort of add in this extra step of things happening here where we first had to check for the static friction and don't forget if if you don't overcome static friction that's kinda great that just means the whole problems not moving and acceleration is zero that's an easy problem to do uh, however, when we saw that it was overcoming static friction in this case because we increased the force to 70, then we just had to find the kinetic friction and subtract that from our 70 newtons to the left to find the net force and to find the acceleration. So that's a typical um, friction problem on a flat surface.